What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video here, I'm going to do uh, I'm going to look back at 2021. You know, it is a new year, 2022. So happy new year everybody. I'm going to do a year in review of my top 10 list of whitewater products that I reviewed. So this is my top 10 list of whitewater products that I review. So you guys stick around. I tell you what, pause the video now, leave a comment below what you think number one is. Out of 10 products, I, I probably reviewed maybe 20 or 30 or 40, I don't know, I lose count. But out of all the products I reviewed just in 2021, what do you think my number one product is? You guys pause the video, hit that like button, and then leave a comment on what you think the video, uh, the number one product is. So yeah, let's go ahead, let's get it started, and um, we'll start it right now. All right, coming in at number 10. The number 10, uh, my favorite product at number 10, I did make a list here for you just so I don't lose count. So, because my brain will start going in different directions. So yeah, the number 10 reviewed product for me, it is the Waka Bro. I get it, I know. Uh, the Waka Goat, what an interesting boat. That boat, um, that kayak hit late, um, early in the spring, so it took me a little bit to get one of the first reviews. Big shout out to the guys at Kaleva. They got me a, a demo down, and I got to demo the Waka Goat. What an interesting boat. Um, it is, I am a little on the heavy side for it, but they rate it from like one, 110 to maybe 200, and I, I usually come in around about 175, 180, so I'm on the upper side. So technically, it should be a little playful. But wow, that boat, um, it, it lacks in the stern squirts, like squirtability and splats, but you can do it. I was able to do it. I know a lot of people were messaging me. I need to just learn how to do a better stern squirt. Well, you know what? I can do one. This boat is wide behind the hips, behind the cockpit, so it has a wide area back there for stern squirting. But wow, what a great river runner. This boat, for anybody looking for a really good downriver half slice, this is the boat. It spins, it surfs like a dream, it's got nice bow rocker for getting up and over drops, for coming off of things. I really like the Waka, uh, the Waka Goat. Not so much with the Billy Goat. The Billy Goat, it seemed like when I added that volume in the back, when Waka added that volume, it just did not... For me, it didn't translate well for my weight. Maybe lighter people like it. But looking around, I don't see a lot of people paddling that boat. So, yeah. Um, walk a goat, number 10. All right, number 10's out of the way. Um, I didn't know if you guys would expect that one. Number 9. Number 9 is something that was very interesting to me. I had seen these products come along. Guess what it is? It's the... Piranha hookers, the thigh hookers and the Jackson B's knees. I really like seeing when manufacturers go this route of adding a upgrade and performance upgrade to a current models and where you can buy like something, whether I, I just think it's cool. I just think it's cool. I think it was really interesting that Piranha has a not a very aggressive thigh hook already. Not a big fan of their thigh hooks by themselves, but when you put, they do work. Don't get me wrong, it works. Just like Jackson works, but being able to add a little accessory like the bee's knees or the thigh hookers and just get a little more grab on that thigh hook for twisting and turning and not coming out of the thigh hooks. Very innovative product. I liked it. It worked well. Both of them worked extremely well. Totally different concepts. You guys check out my videos of the bee's knees and the the piranha thigh hookers. You know, funny name, hookers. You know, I got me a set of hookers. I get it. Um, I really like the product. I, I did a review on these early in the year. I did a review on the bee's knees maybe around golly season, somewhere around there. So, yeah, go over and check those videos out because I think you'll really like these products as an upgrade to your, um, your existing kayak. Let's move on to, no, what are we at? We're at number eight. Number eight, um, I hooked up with the guys from Zet. And number eight is the Zet Cross and the Zet 5. Both of them are kind of, they complement each other very well. I come in a little heavy for the, for the 5 and a little light for the Cross. It seems like there's a gap with the 5 and Cross. I did put both these boats in the same um, number, number, seven, number 8 category because of the fact that they, they're very similar. They complement each other very well. Very well made, some of the best outfitting I've ever seen, some of the best plastic I've ever seen, very good customer service, really cool looking designs, 
they did everything extremely well. Z5, Z Cross. Um, I did walkthroughs and on water reviews of these video uh, of these boats. If you guys want, go check those videos out. That's my number eight. Number seven. All right, number seven. Yeah, this one. This one might shock a lot of you guys because not technically a whitewater boat, but it's the Crescent CK1, uh, Crescent CK1 Venture. This boat is a sit on top wreck meets fishing meets river type boat. It is capable up to class two, three whitewater. I would take this thing down uh, up to, I would take it down the Ocoee and be fine in it. I really enjoyed this platform. Crescent nailed it. They made a really good platform for all around fishing, wreck, camping, you name it. I really enjoyed paddling this boat. I currently own one. I use it more times than you probably see on videos. I love getting out for a day of fishing, for just a day of kicking around a lake or going down a uh, easy moving river. Highly recommend the Crescent CK1. I will put up the video. In the video you can see how how well it kind of zips around the river. I'm on I'm on a class one two river and it just handles it with ease. Super stable, very easy to paddle, very well made, made in the USA. Highly recommend the Crescent CK1 Venture. So yeah, all right, we're almost halfway. Number six. Number six was another interesting boat. It came out of um, the good old country of the UK. It is the Wavesport Phoenix. The Phoenix. Oh boy, of uh, the Wavesport Phoenix. The Phoenix has been around for a while. I have a backstory with Wavesport. I won't get into on this video, but I always like the Wavesport brand. This was a very good outfitted boat. The outfitting was extremely durable and very well made. It was very similar to the Contour Ergo outfitting. The boat paddled like nothing I had paddled yet. It had it had edges. It had a very short tail. It had a long bow. It came out of drops fast. Got a little chaotic at times. Very flat hull. Kind of a hard edge. It was very flat planing with a tight, with like kind of a boxy more edge. But it was very well refined. Super fast. Really good downriver. I would creak in this boat. It was a nine foot kind of race boat, uh, do all type boat. Highly recommend the Wavesport Phoenix. Hopefully we'll start seeing more of these boats come in the U.S. because I was very impressed with the Wavesport Phoenix. Uh, check out that video. I leave links down. You guys can check out the video of the Wavesport Phoenix. I did a walkthrough. I did some on-water review. Then I just did some general paddling. Uh, Wavesport Phoenix, yeah. What a, great, what a great one. And it came in pink. It came in hot pink. Who doesn't love a pink kayak? Um, and they're all solid. I had, they have some of the best colors I have ever seen with that cherry bomb, the lime. They, they just have a really good lineup. Go check those guys out now. Uh, let's see. Moving on. Moving on. Number five. Uh, number five. We're halfway there. I get it. Well, I'm trying to keep these moving. Number five was a kayak paddle, the Letman LCS Extreme 70. Oh, wow. It has a Ford crank design to it. I got my hands on one of these paddles. One of the best kayak paddles I have ever used. I'm still hanging on to that. I know they're a little pricey. It goes into design. They're carbon Kevlar layup. It's a carbon Kevlar fiberglass mix with a take apart design. Really love this paddle for big water. You get this thing on big water. The purchase, the purchase power that you get from that blade is amazing. Where it falls short a little bit is on the back face. The back face is a little rounded off. It has a rounded off peak to it. So it doesn't want to load on that back face, back face for like free wheels or splats or cartwheels or things like that. That's why you'll still see me using my older AT or a Warner paddle when I'm doing more kind of downriver type stuff. And also, I don't like using it on Mankey Creeks. Oh, it, it's painful. It hurts so bad when you jam that thing down into rocks. Um, yeah, so the the Letman LCS Extreme 70. Go over, give that video a look, and um, see what you think of that paddle because um, it, it's interesting. There's a guy importing them into the U.S. You guys can hit me up, and I can put you in touch with that. All right, where are we at? Number five. All right, now we're we're down into the um, the top top four. Top four. My top four kayak. It's a kayak. Just. Spoiler alert. Number four was a boat that I kind of helped prototype a little bit. It's the Dagger Code series that comes in a small, medium, large. I got a chance to paddle all three. 
oh wow is this code such a great boat it is so good I really like Palin the Code. It is the perfect Southeast style. The way that boat comes off of drops, the way you can transition off of things, land, the stability, the edge control, amazing. Bow rocker to stern rocker was nailed it. Dagger nailed it with this boat. It was so fun to paddle. I love this boat. I love paddling it. If you guys haven't had a chance to jump in a code, it is size perfect. The small feels like a small, the medium feels like a medium, and the large feels like a large. The large doesn't paddle huge, but it is a bigger boat, and I really like paddling the code. I think it's going to be a winner. I think it's going to be around for a while. This has some staying power. It's got some longevity. This is a boat you can buy and be happy from beginner to expert. I feel like I could paddle this. I could give this to someone just learning how to paddle, or I could take it down anything where it falls short a little bit is on big water some might disagree with me some of the team guys might disagree with me what happened is dagger lifted those edges high on the rails so it gets a little chaotic at times in big water you'll come down out of drops and it still wants to kind of like go like that and get out of control a little hard to control in big volume but wow i could paddle this thing down anything and be happy very good kayak don't get me wrong it's one of the best kayaks i've ever paddled the dagger code so yeah that's my number four so my number four dagger code good job dagger they nailed it once again yeah so go check that video out now i'll leave a link in the description where you could go check out my code on water and my um walkthrough of the dagger code number three number three product whitewater product out there that i've tried out this was a really good project. It is the Piranha Scorch. Oh, the Scorch. The, the medium Scorch, large Scorch. I, I did have a chance to get in the small, medium, and large of the Scorch. What a great, great boat. Uh, I love it. The, the Scorch has been one of the best designed kayaks. It was like Piranha. I called it spaghetti on the wall. They just threw everything they had at the wall, and whatever stuck, they stayed with it. They nailed it. Prana nailed it. Those edges are like ripper style edges. The bow has like a 9R style bow. It's not as long as a 9R. I think it's around about 8.8. Eight. It's got some rails on it. That thing is beautiful for going into holes, flowing downriver. One of the most best downriver flowy boats I've ever paddled. Where, where the Scorch falls short is where the code excels. That's what's so funny about this. The, code, the Scorch falls short of transitioning off of these Southeast style booth, booths because of the hard rails. It doesn't want to come off smooth off of things. It can do it just like the code. It can go back and forth because they're so close. I would almost tie these for a third place, uh, the code and Scorch. You get some big water, get some volume around this boat. Oh wow, it's so good. Even on, even on runs like the Akoi where it's water, the Upper Yawk, water, the Golly where you can do these flowy top stuff, the, the Scorch is amazing for that. And they've widened and flattened. Unlike the Code, the Code comes in and has a kind of a pointy, kind of like rounded off the, the, the Scorch comes out and it's flat and wide so it hits drops. I did do a comparison of Code versus Scorch where you guys can go that. I piled them back to back side by side and let you really decide on how those things come out of a hole but yeah what a great design good job piranha they hit a home run knocked it out of the park with this boat the thing with boats like this is what are their staying power unlike the code i could see the code being beginner to expert i could see a beginner paddling it the, the scorch is not a beginner boat i see it as a kind of advanced to intermediate style boat you can't not now. Don't get me wrong. You a beginner can start in anything if he's good enough. You know he or she's good enough. You can start in anything. But with the with the code, the code is very rounded and the stability, initial stability, is really good. The scorch has a flatter tail and a flatter profile that comes down, and it has a tendency to get grabbed from time to time. So you'll struggle. A beginner will struggle a little bit in the scorch where an expert will just shred the scorch up. If you're an intermediate to expert paddler, you will love the scorch. Trust me, you will love that boat. Beginner, maybe, maybe not, but a beginner can start in the scorch and be fine. So yeah, my number three is the scorch. All right. So yeah, go check that video out. Go check out the scorch. My, I did an on water, I did a walkthrough of the scorch also. All right, here we go. Number two, where are my top two? Something that really shocked me, 
Um, I got to demo this. This was something uh, that came out of left field. I didn't see it coming. It is the Dagger Supernova and Nova series. Wow, not technically a review, but I was at a Paddle Expo, and they had one of the reps there had the the version, uh, the small version called the Nova and the, and the Supernova, which is a large version. This is Dagger's full slice kayak. I got to put it through its paces. I was one of the first paddlers to paddle it. I would been given a lot of feedback on this boat because I am a, you know, spoiler alert, I am a slicey boat lover. You know, full slice is something that I kind of learned in a full slice and I love the full slice market. To see Dagger go into the full slice and have such a great lineage on that full slice market from the ultrafuge, the centrifuge, the egos, the eds, the medievals, really good lineage of slicey full slice boats. The design team at Dagger had their hands full. They had to do something innovative. And I can tell you guys, this boat will be out in the spring. You're going to love this design. You're going to love this boat. If you're a full slice person or if you're just interested in full slice, highly recommend the Dagger Supernova and Nova. It has been one of the most fun. It's been the best project I've got to work on with Dagger. So good job with Dagger. If this boat comes the way it's been doing in the prototypes, They've knocked it out of the park with this. Dagger did a really good job. Check out my little video of the Dagger Supernova that I got to do at the Paddle Expo Center. Very good design. Good job, Dagger, for staying to their roots and coming out with something that I think the paddlers want. They have been wanting for years and not just what led, they're leading a little better. And I really enjoy that. They, I mean, Dagger nailed it. Rewind. Uh, the, the Nova and the Code. What a great lineup Dagger has right now. So yeah. Number one. My number one reviewed Whitewater product for 2021. I know this, this is something that really came out of left field for me too. It is the Piranha Scorch X. X. I was so impressed with this boat. This might not be a boat for everybody. This might not be a kayak for everybody, but someone with a with a long line of paddling and paddling a lot of different variety of kayaks, this was something very unique. The Scorch X. The X, not the Scorch. The Scorch is amazing. It's my number, you know, my number two, three. It's in that category. But the Scorch X, oh wow, what a great boat. They Piranha nailed it. Super high rocker. Very narrow and it, at 10 feet long. I was so shocked, so impressed that Piranha did this. This was a combination. If you haven't seen my, my shuttle drive podcast when I had, you know, the, the project manager or the, the sales manager, Chris Hipgrave on, go check it out. We got into a little bit about how the score checks came about. It was a very, very good boat. I did not see this one coming. This came out of nowhere also. Wow, did Piranha nail it. This was one of the best kayaks I have ever paddled in my entire paddling career. This has been an amazing boat to paddle. Highly recommend this boat for you guys that just want to go out of left field and do something crazy. Who does a 10-foot creek boat in today's time? High rocker 10-foot creek boat. It is so fun to paddle. It is so fun to paddle. And let me tell you where it gets even better. Get that thing on big water. You get it on bigger flow stuff, it just ramps off of everything. Such a great boat. Piranha nailed it. Home run by Piranha. So yeah, there it is, guys. That's my top 10 list for 2021, my top 10 breakdown of my top 10 reviewed products for 2021. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, leave in the comments below what you guys think of my list, if you agree with my list, if you think some of the, the boats should be moved around. And like I said, I reviewed some of the stuff in 2019, so it didn't make the list. Thanks for watching. Thanks for everybody that supported the channel, that... Uh, that came out. Thanks for all the people that commented, hitting that like button, and helped this channel grow. I'll keep it going for 2022. I've got more products. I've got a lot of paddling to do. So yeah, thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks for watching, and I will uh, catch you guys next time.